From the WBBZ-TV studio in the Eastern Hills Mall, it's time to play... Bragging Where two teams come together in a battle of wits to determine who will leave with bragging rights. And now, here's your host, John DeShillo, with today's two teams. Hey, everybody, thank you very much. How about a round of applause for our bagpipers here tonight for a very special edition of Bragging Rights celebrating a great hometown event. Let me introduce you to our uh, esteemed musicians. Over here you are. Aiden. Aiden, how are you? I'm good, how about you? Good, how long have you been playing the bagpipe? Uh, about two months. Two months, that's it? <laughs> yeah. What motivated you to want to do this? I don't really know, to be honest. <laughs> well, you're very good at it, so maybe two months will lead to decades. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a heavy wind. And we have another uh, fine gentleman. You are? Dan. Dan, don't tell me you've been a little longer than two months. Uh, it's been three years. Three, okay. So what got you motivated to play the bagpipes? I was at a Scottish festival once, and my mother looked at my dad, and she was like, wow, wouldn't it be cool if uh, one of our four children played the bagpipes? And I just kind of said I'd do it, and they didn't take me seriously, but I was, so... <laughs> Well, we're happy that you're here. It's a very special sound, very unique, as we celebrate the Buffalo Niagara Scottish Festival coming up August 17th and 18th. Gentlemen, you stand right over there, and uh, we're going to hear from you later in the show. And uh, thank you very much. So you go right over to your place, and we're going to welcome our hometown teams that are here on the red side. Would you please welcome the Scottish Fest team? These are the organizers of the big event coming to the Buffalo Niagara Heritage Village. We'll get to meet them. And they're playing against the Buffalo Heavies. Ooh, yeah, the Buffalo Heavies, and they're going to talk about the athletics that they're going to perform. And uh, we have as uh, our guest scorekeepers, and boy, they are fitting the role tonight, our ambassadors from Liberty Yellow Cab. Say hi to Sheila and Matt. Hello, Sheila and Matt. Hello. But Sheila, you are looking the part. Uh, you know, you're very splendid in, in your kilt skirt. You look fabulous. And Matt, well, let's just say you've never looked better. Oh, what can thank I say? you, John. Thank you. Now, we should mention that Matt has on the tam, which is the hat. I have the tam on as well. And this is the sporin, which is the sort of like a, I don't want to call it a purse, but it's a place to put things, right? Satchel. Satchel, yeah. yeah. Matt, uh, do you think you'd be driving a Liberty cab in this, uh, in this look? I don't know if the customer's lucky, I guess, you know. Y you never know. <laughs> yeah. And for me, the Sporn is a place to keep my cell phone, I'm just saying. All right, let's meet our hometown teams. We're going to bring the captains out so that you can see that they are also in kilts. So the red team captain, Scott, why don't you come on out? And uh, we'll sit. So there, look, look at this. This is a, a nice look. So, and, and you stand right over there, Lou. So, Scott, tell me all about the big event that's coming up. Uh, this is our 35th annual Buffalo Niagara Scottish Festival and Highland Games, Gathering of the Clans. We have uh, l just wall-to-wall -wall music all weekend, 10-plus uh, pipe bands, Celtic rock musicians, uh, including Seven Nations, headlining both days. We have the Buffalo Heavies uh, doing the athletic portion, at, at, for, which they've done for countless years. Um, we have our farm set. We have 35 acres. We have our museum open. Uh, lots and lots to talk about. And you can go to bnhv.org and find out all about it. And Great. Get Thank you very much. And you're all dressed up. Thank you very much. And we're going to come over now. You can go back to your post behind the podium. We're going to come out and meet Lou. Lou, tell us about the Buffalo Heavy. Uh, the Buffalo Heavies is a kilter throwers club. It's uh, athletes who put on games for athletes. We run half a dozen games in Western New York area. We're associated with another five. Uh, we put them on, um, like I said, for athletes in Pennsylvania, Ohio. They come here in Western New York to compete. We do training clinics um, throughout the entire year when we find them and uh, try and find the best games we can. So you'll be there at the Scottish Fest? Yeah, I run the games at the Buffalo Niagara Heritage Village. I'm also the assistant director of the, of the uh, Buffalo Heavies. By the way, we should mention that we're playing for points, 10 points in the first round, 20 in the second, 30 in the third, and in addition to promoting the Buffalo Niagara Scottish Festival, each team, if they win, will become eligible. And you want to make sure, friends, that you want to take a look at the scoreboard because there are Sheila and there's Matt, and if you get your X's or your O's across up and down a diagonal, in addition to looking at their smiling faces, you get a bonus of 50 points. So that's terrific. And by the way, if you win, you become eligible for three large screen TVs from our sponsor, Dirt Cheap TV. So we're ready to play. 
And we, uh, I just, I love the look. Thank you, Chris Hitchcock, for setting all this up and your lovely wife, Darcy. We saw Chris, and you'll meet him later uh, in, in one of our Taste of Buffalo shows. All right, so the blue team is up. So, Lou, take a look at the scoreboard. Where do you want your blue O to go? Uh, A1. A1, right at the top. Thank you there, Matt. Recently, we celebrated a D-Day anniversary. Listen to these first four notes of the theme of the movie, The Longest Day. So now we've listened to that. What is the significance to those notes? A, the music writer was a descendant of Beethoven. B, it was Morse code. Or C, none. The writer was a descendant of Beethoven, Morse code, or no significance at all. Okay, Lou? Nothing. You say there's no significance. Yes. Sheila? The answer is B. It's Morse code. Morse code. Uh, it was Morse code for the letter V for victory. And that's just what the Highlanders and all of those friends and the Buffalo Heavies will be doing at the Buffalo Scottish Festival. Onward to victory, right? The Scottish Festival team, you are next. So, Scott, take a look at the board. Where do you want your red X to go? Uh, B2. B2. What connection did Irving Berlin have to Buffalo? A, he was living in Buffalo when he wrote his first song. B, his first wife was from Buffalo. Or C, while traveling through Buffalo later in life, he was injured slightly when he slipped on ice. Irving Berlin. Uh, we're gonna go with uh, B, wife. B, his first wife was from Buffalo. That is correct. B. Yes, it is. <laughs> 10 points on the board. And here's the backstory on that. Miss Dorothy Getz from Buffalo became Irving Berlin's first wife in 1912. Dorothy Getz Berlin died of typhoid, contracted on their honeymoon trip to Cuba. And Irving Berlin was inconsolable for many months, stopped writing songs, and he started again. His first song was a tribute to his late wife, When I Lost You. So a little bit of interesting trivia there from Phil Arno, the creator of our show. We're up to the Buffalo Heavies again. Lou, where would you like your game piece to go? Yeah, let's go B1. B1. Straight across. We are broadcasting from this facility. When did the Eastern Hills Mall open? A, 1971, B, 1974, or C, 1977? 71, 74, or 77? 77. C. Sheila? No, that's not right. The answer is A, 1971. It was a very good year in November, and it gets better all the time around here, just saying, right? Okay, Scottish Festival team, this is the last question in this round. It's up to you. Scott, where do you want your red X to go? Oh, C3. C3. Thank you, Matt. What year did the Boulevard Mall open? All right, we're throwing <laughs> one at you. A, 1958, B, 1962, or C, 1968? 58, 62, or 68? Uh, we're going to try 1962. Let's try it. B. That's correct. Yes, it was a very good year. The year I was born. <laughs> they are old. That's very good, Buffalo <laughs> Heavies. It's going to be a smackdown here. I can feel it. Let's take a look at the score. Matt and Sheila, what is it? Um, the red team has 20, and the blue team actually has zero. Oh, boy. Scoreboard's All right. We gotta, we gotta change that. As we go to break, we're gonna put up the information about the event, make sure you check it out, and we hope to see you as our Buffalo Niagara Scottish Festival bragging rights continues. There it is, everybody, August 17th and 18th at the Buffalo Niagara Heritage Village there at 3755 Tonawanda Creek Road in Amherst. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bragging Rights. John DeShula with you. We're listening to the bagpipers over there. That's Dan and Aiden. And we really appreciate them being here. And uh, they're gonna be a part of the Buffalo Niagara Scottish Festival. And I'm here with the whole group from Liberty Cab, Liberty Yellow Cab, Bill Yunke. This is quite a, quite a look here. Thanks for setting everybody up. Well, I'll tell you, I feel a little bit overdressed today. I'm the only one with pants on. Ooh, there you go. Good <laughs> line. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, Bill gets a laugh. Hey, that's okay, Bill. That's good. So, you know, everybody at Liberty Cab supports Western New York. You've been to so many events this summer. Sheila, I know you've been to so I many have, events. I have, yes. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you wear your sunscreen. That's all I can say. And the bagpipes. I mean, who doesn't love the music of bagpipes? And, uh, you know, it's really a fun, it's fun to be part of what's happening here in Buffalo. Well, you're a great supporter of everything in Western New York. And, yes, it's great inspirational music. And so as a result of your support of Western New York, in addition to what you've done for WBBZ and bragging rights, and also an event that happened earlier this year, it was Girls World Expo, and that was in March. So take a look at this plaque. Ooh, nice plaque. <laughs> so, Bill, you can have this. You're going to hang that on the wall at Liberty Cab. We can't thank you enough for everything you've done for all of these community groups, not only at Girls World in March, but everything here at WBBZ. People like this get a chance to promote, in prime time, everybody, their community event, thanks to Bill and his support of everything here at the station. So I think that deserves a round of applause. Thank you, John. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so Sheila. Yes. Are we gonna go to Amherst? Mm -hmm. We're going to go to Amherst, yes. We are. We are going to download the Ride app, R-I-I-D-E, and you can enter promo code RIDELOCAL1 and get $10 off your first ride. And maybe you could find Matt in that Liberty Cab. I'm just, I'm going to ride you all night for that, Maybe Matt. That's night. all right. All near right. The, near the beer. Near the beer. Near the beer. <laughs> That's right. We'll have that in segment three. Here's the website, libertycab.com. That's where you want to find out everything about what we're doing with our hometown Liberty Yellow promoters and everybody here in West New York is so happy that Bill is helping you out. All right, our teams are here on the blue side, the Buffalo Heavies, everybody. And they're playing against the Scottish Festival team organizers on the red side. Hey, they're the Heavies, they're the bosses. You don't want to boo them. All right, we're going to talk with this another member of our, of our team. Why don't you step right out here and uh, step right in front of your podium. All right, and you are? Mike Landrich. Mike, now, what uh, what is the best sport that you excel in as a heavy? Uh, actually, strongman. I was a better strongman than I am a Highland game, Games athlete, but this is a little bit easier on the body. So, so strongman would be like lifting weights? Uh, yeah, basically, like if you ever watch the World's Strongest Man, you know, lifting stones, logs, flipping cars, stuff like that. Okay, we need guys like you. Well, I don't know if you need us, but you're fun, we're fun to watch. Yeah, no, you got it. You're yeah, we need that strength. All right. You come on out here, young man, and uh, we're going to take a look at this. So you are in charge of everything. What, but you have something very unique here off to the side. What is that? That's a dirk. What is that? It, Can you pull that it's out? It's actually oh my. a small sword. And it would be from them taking a sword that was in battle and actually making it smaller. So they have a full-length sword and a smaller sword to fight with. Wow, you know, you guys are tough. We got the heavies. We got... Uh, Swords? We told them not to mess with us. Yeah, I, I can see. <laughs> and what is your name and what's your involvement with the event? I'm Carl Reifschneider. I'm the entertainment director. And we've got some great music coming with Seven Nations. They're a big band and known nationally. And we've got Tom Kiefer and the Celtic Cross from who are local. Uh, Bill Craig, who used to play and sing with the uh, Irish Rovers. We've got dancers. We've got two stages, plus we've got the pipe bands. There's going to be all kinds of fun and entertainment going on. Yeah, and like Bill said, it's very inspirational, some of the music, particularly with the back. Yes, it is. It is, and they're a lot of fun, too. Yeah. All right, so you go back to your post. All right, so we uh, take a look now at Sheila and Matt again, all uh, dressed up for the occasion as well. What is the score, Sheila and Matt, as we get into round two? The red team has 20, the blue team has zero. Okay, 20 to zero, and we're playing for 20 points in this round. And... Uh, yeah, it's got to get the flags and the whole look. All right, so Buffalo Heavies, you are up next. Lou, take a look at the scoreboard. Where do you want your O to go? To D4. D4. All right, we just had this as a 50th anniversary. You may have uh, watched the Offbeat Cinema special on it with our special movie. When the Apollo 11 lander touched down on the moon in 1969, how much fuel did it have remaining in its tank? A, 10 minutes. B, two minutes or C, less than 30 seconds? C, less than 30 seconds. Oh, Lou jumped right in there, and there it is, that iconic photo. He that says less correct. than 30 seconds, Sheila. Less than 30 seconds, Congratulations, yes. roughly 15 yeah, we seconds when they shut that engine <laughs> off. American Hero. They had to jump on that one. It was those going spacemen, on. those astronauts. All right, Scottish team organizers. Let's next. go B3. B3. Speaking of Apollo, the Saturn V rocket, which launched this mission, was about how tall? A, 287 feet, B, 310 feet, or C, 365 feet? Saturn V rocket, 
two hundred eighty seven three hundred ten or three hundred sixty five feet may have to take a guess ok we're going to go with uh, three sixty five C that is correct C All right. Yeah. Wow. I'll speak for my friend Lou. Was that a guess or did you know that? Oh, of course we knew it. Of course you did, yeah. <laughs> They're lying, Lou. They're lying over there. He did it with a good face, though. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Like Me and Neil are like, like this. Tamers. You got it. <laughs> All right, so we're moving along. The uh, Buffalo Heavies are up next. Lou, where would you like your O to go? B4. B4. Which of these companies is worth more? A, Disney, B, General Motors, or C, Walmart? Disney, General Motors, or Walmart. Who's worth more? Yeah. Buffalo Heavies. You can find out business. information about our Kilted Throwers Club that are here on the show tonight. Uh, we're going to go with Walmart. C. C. Walmart. Yes. Hey, all right, Mike. Good to do that. We know yeah, that Lou has this as walking around money, but Walmart had 386 billion. That's B billion, Disney 238 billion, and General Motors a paltry 140 billion. How about that? So when you go to Walmart, you're hanging with the, the big guys. Scottish Festival team, you're up next. Where is your red X going to go? A3, please. A3, Matt. Question eight. In 1912 dollars, how much was the most expensive ticket on the Titanic? A, uh, 895 dollars. B, 1,760, or C, 2,560? Remember, these are $1,912. 895, 1760, or 2560. We're going to go with uh, B, 1760. B. No, it's oh. not. It's C, 2,560. Yeah. How about that? And that was the last question in this round. Charlotte Drake. Cardeza, age 58 of Philadelphia, bought what is believed to be the most expensive ticket at 2560, the equivalent. This is how much it would have been worth today, folks. You ready? $67,000 for the ride, wow. which, well, it, we all know what happened there. It didn't go very well for them. All right, let's take a look at the scores. We had round two. What is it, Matt and Sheila? At the end of round two, we're all tied up, 40 apiece. 40 to 40. All right, see how things picked up? All right, so the Buffalo Heavies versus the Scottish Fest organizers. We'll be back. We'll hear more from the bagpipers, too, right after this. Welcome back to Bragging Rights. We're celebrating the Buffalo Niagara Scottish Festival. Coming to the Buffalo Niagara Heritage Village. A round of applause for our bagpipers. You're going to hear more from them in just a little bit. Dan and Aiden. All right, so uh, we're going to meet now some other members of our hometown team. And I'm going to go back onto the blue side. And I'm going to introduce you to Catherine. Catherine, come on out, because I know you are all decked out as well. So now what's interesting, Catherine, is that you have some patches on. What, uh, maybe what do those patches represent? Uh, well, they uh, usually represent a particular event that I've uh, gone to and thrown at, or a competition. So at three of the uh, patches are for world uh, international events that I've thrown at. So okay. all my patches are not actually on my kilt yet. So I'm it's kind of a that. kind of a branding of where you've been, yes. and that's good. Yep. Now I understand, Catherine, that that you are you know you are quite the athlete. You are, right? Sure. Yes, yes you are. Yes, I am. Okay. And, and, I know that, and I know that we talked a little bit about doing maybe a little bit of a smackdown for me to okay. see if I can challenge you to an arm wrestling. Can carry you off the stage, or what would you like me Ooh, to do? There arm you wrestling? go. Look at that, Catherine. Sure. You know, Catherine just is poking it along there, Catherine. Okay. All right, why don't you get back? Let's see. All right, we'll see how we can do this. All right, guys. I don't, no, I'm going to come over here. So, uh, you, Charlie, will. Right? I'm not going to sue you. No, no. Okay. All right, Charlie, make sure, you Charlie, you got to get a close-up of this because this is going to be for all eternity, okay? Wait, let me show some muscle. Oh, my okay, gosh. Look at Catherine's mud. This is it. She's got the guns. Oh, my God. Oh, man. All right, you win, Catherine. You win. High five. You can be a high five. Oh, my gosh. Even the high five is, is tough. All right, we're going to come over now and meet uh, Chris Hitchcock. Chris, how are you? Good, John. Nice seeing you again. Yeah, good to see you. And, uh, you know, Chris uh, has been an organizer of this event and putting all of the game show part of it together and is also on the Taste of Buffalo board. And what are you going to talk about in, re in respect uh, to the Scottish uh, Festival? A few things i like to talk about. Uh, the pipe bands. We have a pipe band competition on Saturday where bands come in and compete against each other for uh, uh, prizes. 
We have uh, five pipe bands uh, performing during the day, plus the Gordon Highlanders. Two of our pipers today are from the Gordon Highlanders, and they happen to be the oldest pipe band in the country, 180 plus years old. Wow. Um, and then our, our, one of our beer sponsors is New York Beer Project, that we're gonna be serving a Scotch ale. It's called Stone's Throw. That's very tasty. Really? So, so I, I may need some after my smackdown with Catherine. Made there. specifically for the uh, Scottish Festival. There it is, and uh, from a New York, uh, the IPA project, yeah, the New, New York, York Beer Project, project. Yeah. yeah, on Transit Road. In I, I know sometimes you have viewing parties over there of the show. Yeah, yeah we're actually going to do a viewing party, uh, your first showing of our, our show, I think it's the first week in August on, on Tuesday night. Somewhere in along those yeah. lines. So yeah. if you're watching there at the New York uh, Beer Project, we, we, we can't wait to see Show up and come with it because we'll be all in kilts again. All right. That, that, that sounds good. Chris, thanks for all your help with everything. You're welcome. All right, we're going to hear more from the bagpipers in just a little bit. All right, let's check in with Matt and Sheila. What's the score as we get into round three? Both the red team and the blue team have 40 points apiece. 40 points. Could be a smackdown. I may need that coin over there, Captain Bill Yonke. We'll see. We're up to question number nine, and it is your turn, Lou. Where do you want your blue O to go? Uh, C4, please. C4. All right, you remembered in the last segment we talked about the Titanic and a, uh, a, a woman that bought that expensive ticket. Interestingly, Mrs. Cardeza and her 36-year-old son Thomas survived the disaster and later filed a claim for their 14 trunks full of lost possessions. How much did her claim amount to in 1912 money? A, 10 grand. B, 67 grand. C, 177 grand. And she sued about the Titanic. 1067 or 177,000. In 1912. We're going to go B. B. I'm sorry, it's C, 170. Oh, she, she cleaned up there in what amounts to a remarkable memory. Car Cardeza managed to itemize more than $177,000 worth of belongings, more than $4.5 million in today's money, including a five. Uh, 5,500 cash equivalent. All right, so it's a lot of cash, 143,000. All right, we're up to question number 10. And the Scottish D3. festival team, D3. you are next. Where do you want your red X to go? Uh, we're going to try D3. D3. According to polls taken by Gallup, the New York Times, and public policy polling, which of these has been viewed the least favorably? A, cockroaches, B, hemorrhoids, or C, Congress? <laughs> oh. Least favorably. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> One was the poll any, taken. We're not making any political <laughs> statements here, but I'm just saying it's according to Gallup, not me. Cockroach, cockroaches, hemorrhoids, or Congress, yeah. 1912. Lou can't get that year out of his head. I want to go Congress. Wow. Um, they want to go cockroaches. I want to go Congress, but I'm going to defer to my teammates and say cockroaches. A. You shouldn't have done that. It's C, Congress. <laughs> yeah, it was C, well. yeah, Congress, and not surprisingly, approval rating of around 9% when considering the margin error of error could be close to zero. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but we wish them the best in Washington, <laughs> D.C. <laughs> the Buffalo Heavies, Lou, you are next. Uh, let's go back to C4, please. C4. And I'll give a look there. A United States government program started in 1935 to help expand electric services into rural areas mm -hmm. of the country. Yeah is called the Rural Utility Service. That program never went away. How much does that program cost taxpayers each year now, 84 years after it was started? A, nothing. All the costs went away in 1958. B, 100 grand administration fees. Or C, 5.5 billion. The Rural Utility Service. Nothing, 100 grand in fees or 5.5 billion. There's still an agency, there's some fees at least. Lou? Let's go big. Want to go big? We're going to go big. C. They're going big. C, 5.5 billion. That is correct. Yes, they are right to bring electric to rural areas of the country. All right, we're up to question number 12, and it's the last question of the game. Scottish Fest team, where do you want your red X to go? Well, we got a block, A4. A4, okay, yep. What year was Max Factor Makeup founded? A, 1905, B, 1909, or C, 1929? Max Factor. 29. Say 29. Let's say 29, C. It's B, 1909. 09. We got the nines right. 
And it was for the oh, silent boy. movie industry and silent movie screen No, acting. you guys are up. God knows I wear a lot of Max Factor makeup, too. All right, we are coming to the end of this edition of Bragging Rights, supporting the Buffalo Niagara Scottish Festival. <laughs> Our bagpipers are getting ready to take us home. What is the final score, Sheila and Matt? We have the red team with 40, the blue team winning with 70. 70! Yeah, there they are. All right, they, you guys, you hold on to that beer. There you go, you can share that. But we're not gonna send anybody home empty-handed. We have tickets to Ransomville Speedway. And in addition to that, we're gonna give you a gift. Yeah, Ransomville Speedway, you can find out more at ransomvillespeedway.com. Enjoy the great races after the Scottish Festival, of course. And we're also gonna give some of our team members a gift certificate to Mississippi Muds, Prima Pizza Pasta, and Old Man River, the Barifato family of restaurants. All right, hey, Matt and Sheila, you look terrific in your kilt. Matt, we'll see you driving around Western New York. You're yes, looking you like will. that. You look good. Yeah, hey, thank good. you. That's all good. And we thank the <laughs> Scottish uh, teams for being here. The Buffalo Niagara Scottish Festival, August 17th and 18th. It. You might want to go. The website is bnhv.org and you can get discounted pre sale tickets. All right, our bagpipers, come on in and take us home. Go to our website, wbbz.tv, find out more about the show and all the hometown events that we are supporting because we are your official station of summer MeTV fun. Thanks for watching, everybody.